On this episode of Eat Sleep Drive, we go to Miami and drive what is probably one of the most Miami cars in existence, the Jaguar F-Type Convertible. I get some sunburn and then we take this thing for a spin and see what it's like. Welcome everyone to another episode of Eat Sleep Drive. Now for you returning subscribers, you guys know that I'm from Ohio, or if you didn't know that, you could probably tell that by my pale white skin, but it is February right now, and February in Ohio is horrible. I haven't seen the sun in like three months, and it was actually snowing when I left. So I decided to come down to Miami to get some sun, some sun rays, some sunshine, some beautiful weather, and what better car to do it in than a convertible Jaguar F-Type. This is a 2014 Jag F-Type, base model, convertible. Uh, so the base model's got 340 horsepower. We'll get into all the specs and all that stuff, but we're gonna take this thing for a spin, and this is gonna be a little different because typically I carve up a back road in Ohio or wherever the heck I am, but we're in Miami, more specifically like Miami Beach, um, South Beach area, and uh, there's not a whole lot of curvy roads, and honestly, there's a ton of traffic. So it might make for an interesting video, but you guys are gonna come along for the ride anyways, and we're gonna have some fun, and we're gonna talk about the Jaguar F-Type. Now, I normally don't wear sunglasses, so forgive me, but we're gonna put the top down, of course, because it's a convertible, and we're in Miami, and I need sunglasses so I can friggin' see. It's a little windy. So let's put this thing in sport mode. It has a sport mode, sharpens up the throttle and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna put it in manual transmission mode, even though it's an automatic. And let's cruise for a little bit. It's got enough go to put a smile on your face. It's not ultra fast, 340 horsepower. Uh, but it gets the job done. This is a supercharged 3-liter engine from Jag. It's a 3-liter V6. So the supercharger is nice. I don't get any supercharger wine or anything like that, but it sounds really good. The, uh, the exhaust note sounds really good, I think. But uh, it's definitely a good sounding car. It's a good sounding car unlike this Toyota Camry that is making horrible, horrible noises. Now in sport mode, you get um, kind of firmer shifts and everything like that. So it definitely makes it feel sporty. And that's one of the nice things I like about this transmission as I go back to just regular manual mode. And I'll even put it into comfort mode. This car uh, in general, and also this transmission more specifically, has a nice sort of dual personality. Like I can do the chill Miami thing and just sort of cruise around the road in automatic and the shifts are very smooth, very silky, um, not harsh or anything like that. And it's great for just being stuck in traffic and those kind of things. But when you put it in sport mode um, and you put it in manual mode, the shifts kind of kind of hit you and it makes it feel a little more eventful and that kind of thing. So it's got a little bit of a dual personality, I think. Uh, so I really like that about the car. We've already kind of talked about the noise, um, I think, the exhaust makes a good noise. It makes a good like burble on downshifts. Which I don't know if you guys could hear that right there. Put in sport mode. See, so sport mode doesn't change the hear those pops as this Mustang bro goes by. But um, sport mode in this car, in the base, doesn't really do much other than sharpen the throttle. Uh, the S, the Model S's, or the F-Type F Type S, uh, which is one that I would consider buying, and in fact, it is something I am considering buying, which is why I uh, am checking out this car for a couple days to see if it's, it's something I would enjoy. I would typically go with the coupe version uh, because I live in Ohio and I don't really get a lot of time to enjoy a convertible version and I kind of just like the way the coupes look and everything like that. 
Uh, but it's it's a fun car. It's a fun car. I've enjoyed it. I think it's more of a cruiser though, uh, because as I've driven it and mentioned that this is a fixed suspension, the uh, S type gets an adjustable suspension and stuff like that. It's a little more comfort oriented, but in a place like Miami where the roads are surprisingly bad in a lot of a lot of areas, it's actually pretty nice to have this uh, a little more comfort oriented suspension. It soaks up the bumps really well, but it's also really well damped to where you could have fun if you do ever find turns in Miami, which don't really exist too much. Sorry, we gotta get by this truck. I'm getting like asphyxiated and oh, of course this lane ends. It's got the power to make that happen. And I'm driving like a, a typical Florida in right now. Uh, if you've ever been to Florida, Florida drivers are the worst in the country, in my opinion. They're horrible. Um, zero turn signals, go wherever you want, beep constantly. Like people beep here more than, or people honk their horn more than they, in like New York City, honestly, it's ridiculous. Horrible drivers here. And the roads are not the greatest. But that's why you get a car like this, because you're just gonna drive up and down the coast in traffic but you at least get to have the sun on your face. You get uh, the lovely smell of the ocean. As, you can, as I look to my left and my right, I see the ocean. Um, so it's kind of like the perfect car for Miami, I think, really, because you can have a fast car, but you're not really gonna go anywhere because you're always in traffic. You can have a really good handling car, but all the roads are straight and there's not really any curvy roads. So, you know, what more do you want? So anyway, getting back to the F-Type, we've kind of already talked about uh, the engine transmission. I think the engine makes good power at 340. Transmission is pretty good. The ZF eight speed. So it actually gets surprisingly good fuel economy, like 28 on the highway. And I just like the ZF eight speed. I had it in my 335i. It's a good transmission, not dual clutch good, but it can do, you know, it can do the around town uh, stuff real well because it's, torque converted and dual clutches kind of struggle with that kind of stuff but when we move on to the chassis it's a really nice chassis nice and rigid it's around 35 or 3600 pounds and that's pretty good given the size and the luxuriness of this car they used a pretty significant amount of aluminum in this chassis to try and keep the weight down and i think it goes a long way like it feels like a you know a lighter car uh given its size I, I'm a little bit let down by the steering, however. The steering, the steering should be good because it is hydraulically assisted. And as we know, um, electric power steering is pretty much taken over, mostly because of fuel economy reasons and stuff like that. But a lot of times, unless you get into real high-end stuff like Porsches, electric power steering can be questionable. So typically I would say, yes, I would love to have um, traditional hydraulic power steering but this doesn't really have a whole lot of feel to it. I'm kind of surprised by that. Like I was really expecting it to be um, quite a bit better. It's fairly direct and uh, the, the turn in is pretty quick and stuff like that. But when you're in a corner loaded up, you don't really know what the front tires are doing. Like you're not really getting a lot of feedback. And that's a real letdown for me with this car. Um, Cause I, I, I think that it has sporty aspirations, but to not have good steering in a sporty car really, really is a, is a mark against it in my book. While we're on the topic of feel from, you know, the steering and stuff like that, how about these brakes? The brakes stop the car really well. The Type S, I'm calling it the Type S, I think it's a Jaguar F-Type S, not the Type S, but the S gets slightly bigger brakes. Um, it gets a 40 horsepower bump, uh, but these brakes are sufficient. Uh, they stop the car really well, but they don't give me a whole lot of feedback. Uh, they are kind of like the steering wheel in the sense that it's accurate, it does what you need to do, but you can't really modulate it, you don't really feel anything through the brakes, so that's a little bit of a letdown too from a, uh, once again, a sporty aspiring car. I think the, uh, we talked about the acceleration, um, so we talked about the brakes, we talked about the steering. What else can we talk about with this car? Oh, the interior. These seats are lovely, um, very comfortable. I, they fit me perfectly. I'm 6'1", 
about 170 and they are on the thinner side i will say they are more of a european cut seat as opposed to an american cut seat so if you're a little wider you might not fit as well but if you're a little narrower they fit really nice um, and they're bolstered well they strike a good balance which once again goes back to kind of what this car is all about it's all about balance between sportiness enough bolstering but also comfort like it's not it's not uncomfortable to sit in and more importantly it's not uncomfortable to get in and out of some cars that have super heavy or high bolstering on the sides they are a real pain to get in and out of and in a car like this that's kind of a little more luxury focused you definitely want um, seats that you can easily get in and out of and you don't look like an idiot getting in and out of the car so I like the design of the interior it's like fairly um, timeless outside of the screen is slightly dated this is a 2014 model so of course we're about six years old right now uh, so the screen is you know the resolution is not great and stuff like that but it's it's fine and I really like the switch gear here for like the AC and the venting and stuff like that it's kind of aviation inspired so you get to kind of push down on these little switches and it's nice i like these bronze the bronze touch to the start stop button and the sport button i like the little switches and stuff and overall like it feels solid like it feels well made um you kind of got some soft touch materials even though it's like not the highest quality leather and stuff like that but overall it feels well made um i like the design i really like the steering wheel uh nice shape overall i don't like all the buttons on the steering wheel but it's a nice shape the color it's kind of like blacked out and stuff like that the the passenger does get a little bit closed off here with this um i don't even know what to call this like little bar partition thing and it feels a little bit claustrophobic when i was sitting in the passenger seat but if you don't have a passenger screw them and if you have a passenger screw them anyways uh but you know lovely lovely interior i think you know obviously it's everyone has their own opinion on the looks of the car cosmetically exterior wise but i think this is an absolutely gorgeous car convertible or coupe um they just knocked it out of the park with this car i love the front end i love the rear end i love the shape i love the long hood like it's just a classical sports car shape so really fits in well here in miami right like in the most one of the most vain cities in the u.s <laughs> we're in a, a very beautiful car um that you know makes pop noises and it, it has a, quite a bit of theater to it and i would say the bark doesn't really match the or the bite doesn't match the bark as i think that's how that goes uh so it's not quite as sporty as it would leave everyone lead everyone to believe but overall it's a really nice car will i buy one i don't know like I was hoping for the base to be a little bit better. Uh, I want to drive an S. Of course, I would love to drive the V8 one, but those are a little expensive. But these V6 ones are really reasonably priced thanks to depreciation of European cars. This guy just opens the freaking door on the street. Man, these people are horrible. Okay, so that's really the Jaguar F-Type. Wonderful car, perfect for this setting. If you live in a place where you can just put the top down and cruise, but you want to get on it every now and then, I say go for it. If you're someone who is like all about the sports car life and you want it to be the best dynamic thing and stuff, look at something like a Cayman because uh, you're going to be a little bit let down with this car. Uh, this, I think this is a nicer cruising experience than the Cayman and it certainly looks a lot better. So it just depends what your priorities are. In a place like Miami, I would get the F-Type over the Cayman. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This has been a little bit of a different one, as I mentioned, and hopefully you guys don't mind the traffic too much and the audio's hopefully okay with the top down. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you want to follow me in between episodes, check me out on Instagram, Eat Sleep Drive TV. Otherwise, I'm going to go enjoy this beautiful sunny day, get my, sun, uh, get my face all burned and sunburned, and then go back to Ohio and cry until the sun comes back out again there. See you guys.